These papers must never see the light of day. Winston, ever. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 shocking The Crown moments. Speaking of enigmas, what do we make of Mr. Wilson? One's heard the rumors, of course. Rumors, ma'am. Darling, you really know nothing, do you? Well, it's true, isn't it? Fourth in line now, and by the time William's had children, his children have had children. Fringe. For this list, we'll be looking at moments or episodes from the first four seasons of this Netflix historical drama that took us all by surprise. Obviously, a spoiler warning is in effect. Which of these moments is ingrained in your mind forever? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Philip issues a warning to Diana. As a fellow outsider, Prince Philip was always Diana's greatest ally. However, when she declares that she wants out of the royal family, this changes almost instantly. If this family can't give me the love and security that I feel I deserve, then I believe I have no option but to break away, officially, and find it myself. I wouldn't do that if I were Why you. not? Taken aback by her defiance, he realizes that they're not as alike as he first thought. The atmosphere turns ominous as Prince Philip issues a threatening warning. Let's just say, I can't see it ending well for you. I hope that isn't a threat, sir. Our foresight makes this moment even more sinister, especially considering the rumors that would later emerge. Although we are both outsiders who married in, you and I are quite different. Yes. I can see that now. As he leaves, Diana realizes she is now more alone than ever and decides that she must raise her shields. And of course, as we know, this is just the beginning. Number 9. The Queen Unveils Her Political Side It's practically unheard of for the constitutional monarchy to interfere with politics. But the Queen vocalizes her disapproval when Margaret Thatcher refuses to join the Commonwealth in condemning apartheid. There are ways of Britain being great again, and that is through a revitalized economy, not through association with unreliable tribal leaders in eccentric costumes. But isn't that all I am, Prime Minister? a tribal leader in eccentric costumes. Certainly not. Rumors of a rift between them were already buzzing, and it doesn't help that Elizabeth decides to fuel the rumor mill, despite her press secretary's warnings. And if it were to become public knowledge that there had been an unprecedented rift between sovereign and prime minister, would that really be so bad? Well. Inevitably, the story erupts, leaving the Queen to face public backlash and, of course, Thatcher's wrath. My fellow Commonwealth leaders, many of whom I consider to be friends, now feel that I have betrayed them on an issue most important to them. Well, they need only read the Sunday Times. It will give them no doubt as to your position. Immediate damage control gets underway to rectify this royal faux pas, but to save face, Michael Shea is dismissed from his post before he can even utter, I told you so. Number 8. Lord Mountbatten's Death Time to catch some lobster. Mm -hmm. The first episode of season 4 briefly addresses the troubles that afflicted the United Kingdom and Ireland. We follow the various royals as they enjoy some downtime during the 1979 August bank holiday weekend. Dickie embarks on a family fishing trip, but not before writing a heartfelt letter to his beloved great-nephew. You're more than a man, more than a prince. And one day, dear boy, you shall be king. And now, to the sea. While the sense of foreboding never disappears, nothing can quite prepare you for this explosive climax. One, two, and... The provisional IRA claimed responsibility for the attack that claimed the lives of several on board, including two teenagers. Even if you remember that fateful day, it's no less startling to watch here. Number 7. The Tragic Past of Princess Alice Struggling to bounce back from their panned BBC documentary, Princess Anne sneakily gets a journalist to interview her grandmother, Princess Alice. He uncovers so many unimaginable details about her painful past, and still, they only just cover the tip of the iceberg. I was born deaf. Oh, I'm sorry. But otherwise perfectly normal. 
Well, I thought so. But obviously others didn't because then I was diagnosed with schizophrenia. She was born deaf, diagnosed with schizophrenia, and committed to a mental institution, where she was mistreated by psychoanalysts. I was treated by Sigmund Freud. He was not a kind man. She endured so much, overcame immense obstacles, and made incredible sacrifices for the good of others. Her story is as heartbreaking as it is extraordinary, and it's shocking that this interview is fictional, because she deserves to have her story known. But instead of business, Princess Alice dedicated her life to charity work, public service, and campaigning for social justice, often at great personal risk. Number 6. Buckingham Palace Has a Spy Speaking of enigmas, what do we make of Mr. Wilson? One's heard the rumours, of course. Rumours, ma'am? Yes, whilst on a trade mission to Moscow, the KGB got him. Nonsense, I know. While suspicions are raised over a potential KGB spy infiltrating Downing Street, the real culprit is right under the Queen's nose, showing her artwork. Sir Anthony Blunt is revealed to be part of the Cambridge Five, a ring of spies who leaked confidential information to the Soviet Union. The truth will out. I'm afraid I can now confirm that the surveyor of the Queen's pictures, Sir Anthony Blunt, was the fourth man in the Cambridge spy ring. Almost unbelievably, security chooses to turn a blind eye just to save face and protect ties with the US. While Elizabeth subtly drops hints about his treachery during their next meeting, Philip opts for a more blunt approach. One wrong step, you treacherous sneak. And I will expose you and have you thrown in jail. But he stopped in his tracks when Sir Anthony drops another bombshell revelation. Imagine how awful it would be, for example, if those pictures saw the light of day now. A storm it would create. Number five, Camilla and Diana have lunch. Very happy to go with the flow. Well, he'll love that. He's so fussy and set in his ways. He'll love it if you adapt to him. Audiences were surprised to learn that Diana and Camilla really did meet for lunch, although reality probably wasn't quite as scandalous as the Crown's imagining of the event. Bored and lonely, Diana takes Camilla up on a lunch date invitation and the pair meet at a restaurant called Ménage à Trois. While there, Camilla makes numerous digs at the future princess, while either choosing to ignore or being completely oblivious to her increasing irritation. Darling, you really know nothing, do you? Diana was well aware of Camilla and Charles's prior relationship, but at this moment, she realizes that while she might have the ring, Camilla ain't going anywhere either. What about hunting? Not if I can help it. More of a townie, really. So you see yourself living more in London than in the country? Why do you ask? Just curious. Number four, the queen discovers her uncle's dark history. Years after abdicating the throne, the Duke of Windsor starts growing wary of non-palace life. However, his plans to rally support for his restoration instantly evaporate due to the revelation of the Marburg Files. In these papers, you're quoted as saying that the Führer's desire for peace was in complete agreement with your own point of view. The documents uncovered his ties with top-rank Nazis as well as a plot to put him back on the throne. A plan to reinstate the Duke of Windsor as King of England, effectively betraying and dethroning your dear late father in return for German forces being given free reign across Europe. The evidence against him is harrowing as Elizabeth learns just how far he was willing to go simply to wear the crown once again. And that continued bombing, that is, the continued slaughter of his fellow countrymen and former subjects, would, I quote, soon make Britain ready for peace. It's no wonder the royals tried to keep this evidence from the public, as it's too heinous to even imagine that this could have happened. There is no possibility of my forgiving you. The question is, how on earth can you forgive yourself? Number three, the Abervan disaster. This season three episode is dedicated to the real life tragedy that wiped out almost an entire generation of Aberfan's youth. Sir. Jesus Christ. Sir. Under the desk, all of you, quickly. Please get under the desk. 
On this fateful day in October 1966, an avalanche of coal waste hurtled into the village, destroying everything in its path and taking the lives of 116 children and 28 adults. Every time the whistle blows, it means they think they've heard something. Another child trapped beneath the wreckage. The depiction of the funeral is particularly heart-wrenching and will stay with you long after the credits roll. While the village mourns, the government focuses on deflecting blame, and the Queen is nowhere in sight. In 2002, the Queen reportedly described her delayed response as her, quote, biggest regret. Number 2. The Royal Cousins I only ask because I am aware, through professional colleagues of the sisters, This revelation from season 4 left us scooping our jaws up off the ground. In an episode that puts a spotlight on mental health, Princess Margaret discovers that cousins she long thought to be dead were alive and living in a care facility. They have pictures of the whole family, which they know is their family. To make matters worse, we are just as horrified as she is when the Queen Mother justifies the family's decision to essentially erase all memory of the pair from public knowledge. The hereditary principle already hangs by such a precarious threat. Throw in mental illness and it's over. While many elements of this episode are fabricated, there is a foundation of truth behind it, which came as a great shock to many viewers too. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Camilla, Prince Charles, and Diana. Can you think of a more infamous love triangle? Who are you referring to? Camilla. Why would I care about her? Because I care about her! Morning, noon, and night I care about her! No exceptions for Prince Philip. The royal couple comes to blows over an age-old tradition. Are you my wife or my queen? I'm both. I want to be married to my wife. I am both, and a strong man will be able to kneel to both. I will not kneel before my wife. But your wife is not asking you to. But my queen commands me. Yes. I beg you make an exception for me. No. Prince Andrew. The writers clearly took influence from recent events. It's set in the 1920s follows a impressionable, nubile, 17-year-old girl, Koo. 17? I'm not sure I want to know more. Don't be such a prude, mummy. The Profumo Affair. Even the royal family couldn't avoid getting embroiled in this scandal. In the aftermath of his suicide, while searching his home, detectives found a portrait, painted by him, of you. I have no explanation for that. A question of fidelity. Philip's jealousy over the Queen's friendship with Porchy causes an explosive argument. But to everyone's regret and frustration, the only person I have ever loved is you. And can you honestly look me in the eye and say the same? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Queen Breaks Her Promise to Princess Margaret I was prepared to go through it all and support you as a sister because I'd given you my word. Princess Margaret and Peter Townsend's whirlwind affair had its fair share of obstacles in Season 1. But it seemed that the dust was finally settling, and with the Queen's blessing, the nuptials could go ahead. Little did she know, however, that their mother had been conspiring with the government to make sure that this marriage would not happen. Elizabeth is backed into a corner, forced to decide between her promise to her sister and her duty to the church. I cannot allow you to marry Peter and remain part of this family. That is my decision. As Elizabeth breaks the news to her sister, we can almost feel Margaret's heartbreak, utter devastation, and the agonizing pangs of betrayal. Without him. I'm lost. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.